I want to start with the ease of purchase study. So for those that are not familiar, CDK and David, you put out phenomenal insights. You're constantly doing benchmarking the industry, doing surveys and really measuring what's happening on the ground floor. Um, but I want to talk about aspects like test drives. What did you uncover there? We did a shopper, what we call like a shopper journey study over the summer, where we kind of wanted to know like what were the basics of, of car selling and, and have they changed? Are they still having the impact that we think they do? We asked them what the experience with that salesperson and what the dealership was like. So we didn't talk to the salespeople because, you know, we, we wanted to get the consumer's, you know, viewpoint on it. And the numbers were pretty stark. And I don't know if they'd be like surprising. Like if, if you're a salesperson and you hear these numbers, you, you might just say, well, yeah, duh. When you have that many people tell you the same thing, it's still kind of reaffirming. So on the test drive side of things, 91% of buyers took a test drive. Every subprime dealer listening to this is probably saying, my customers don't test drive. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, well, and you think, what is that other 9%, you know, and, and these were new car, you know, new car buyers, but that other 9%, a lot of these times, it's like people lease an Accord and they don't need to, you know, three years later, they don't need to drive the Accord. Just give me my Accord and, and get me out the door, right? But 91% are still taking that test drive. And 78% of them said the test drive alone sold them on the car. So just think about that. If you're a salesperson, I don't want to put pressure on the salespeople, but the test drive's it. And not only the test drive, the first impression of the car too. The, the, the respondent said the first impression moved them. So sometimes in our industry, we kind of forget it can be really exciting to buy a new car. So if you're doing all that research online, you, you see commercials, you go, oh, man, that's what I want. Even if it's a, you know, compact SUV and they all look the same, but you find the one that you want and the color you want, you schedule 62 percent schedule an appointment and you get there and it's sitting waiting for you. It's shiny. All those things move the needle. If you're going to the back of the lot, it's, you know, it's squeeze between five others and five other colors and you know you can't tell which one it is it makes a difference so making sure that test drive experience is is top notch is huge i love talking about the fundamentals because it's it's so unsexy and it's so true right i when i was when i was selling cars back in the day i, I had a finance manager and he you know one time i remember he's we were i think there was a customer that that was, you know, contemplating whether to buy a car or not. And he leaned back on his chair. It was like a Herman Miller chair, you know, just leaned super far back. And he said, you'll see. I'm like, what's up? He's like, feel the wheel, seal the deal. <laughs> and I can't get that out of my brain. It's like, feel the wheel, seal the deal. Like, it's so true. Anyways, that's my little story because it's it's 100% true, right? Especially for people when you do the industry, right? Follow, following that process really matters. It is an emotional purchase uh, for many people. So I couldn't agree more. I think what was even more interesting is I have, again, I have some of the stats pulled up here is that 86% of extended test drive buyers bought the car, right? So you're pretty much saying, correct me if I'm wrong here, you're saying that 86% of customers that took that vehicle home, right, for a day at the minimum, ended up making that purchase, which again, implies what many dealers have always known, but maybe some don't, that there is a lot of value to putting that customer on the road. Again, this applies to the earlier we spoke about the subprime dealers. We should not, I do not recommend doing this if you're a subprime dealer because you will likely not, you will likely not get that car back. And anyone with experience can attest to that. Again, I'm generalizing, but you know, being having, you know, teasing a little bit, but there's some truth to it. But in all seriousness, 86% of extended test drive buyers ended up buying that vehicle. Huge testament to letting that customer take that vehicle home, you know, for the day, really kind of integrate it into their life. Anything to add there? When it comes to a test drive, you know, how involved does a salesperson get into the test drive, right? So the numbers are interesting. So you're talking about the 86 number, a full day alone, right? You're alone with that car. I mentioned the 78% number saying the test drive alone sold them on the car. If you allow the driver to take a regular test drive alone, the number's right in the middle, 81%. So even though, and 78% of people said they prefer taking it with a salesperson, which is pretty good, that is completely skewed by, by generation. So the younger they are, they want the ride along, they want the dealer. The older they are, and this probably, again, is not a surprise, but at least we have the research. The older they are, the more likely they are to want to do the test drive alone, whether it's 20 minutes or overnight. So 
Yes, it is very, I, I know it's harder on a dealer to arrange an overnight loan, right? It's like, it's kind of like doing the fourth down and, and football going for it, right? What's the payoff for doing it versus the risk, right? So yeah, it's a pretty stark number. And you're going to know that customer, you're going to have their credit sitting in front of you, you know, hopefully you've, you've talked to them and you understand who they are. And you know, that, like you mentioned, they're not subprime buyers. So it, it seems like the way to go that fourth down play. Yeah, I think the stats speak for themselves. It's one of those things where it's just like huge ROI, something so simple, but this number just kind of hammers at home. I would say that, you know, not everyone does this, like spotting cars in general. It's very, it can be very controversial. It depends on, you know, the owner, but the numbers, I mean, the numbers don't lie. It is definitely drives a lot of value if you do it on a consistent basis, net, even if you might have challenges with, you know, one, two, three customers here and there, or whatever it may be, it's clear that this drives a lot of value. If someone is listening to this right now and they're at a dealership maybe where they don't do this, you can literally, you know, improve your bottom line just by implementing this process, obviously doing it the right way, but it's it's huge. Uh, I was surprised to see the 86% number. That's more than I expected. What about buying patterns across age groups? We spoke about, you know, like 86% is test drives and that's general, but if you dig into specific age groups right now at the dealership, what are you seeing there? Everyone's really focused on, when we talk about generations, on Gen Z, right? Now, the, the buying power is all with millennials right now. It's not necessarily that millennials act any differently than any generation before them. They are just the group that's having a lot of kids. <laughs> so whenever you have kids, it moves the needle. They got to get a new car. Or, you know, I'm a younger Gen X, right? And I have teenagers. So that means more cars, whether they're used or, you know, hand-me-downs, what have you. Millennials have the biggest buying power, but everyone's kind of focused on the Gen Z buyer because they're coming into the market fresh. You could get them for life. You know, you get them at that stage. You could get them for for a longer period into your brand and things like that. So everyone's kind of focused on Gen Z and let's face it, you know, younger people are sexier. So, you know, that's where a lot of the focus is. There's a big misconception on Gen Z because they are so technologically savvy, they live online, all those things that they don't want to interact with people. And all of our research, not just this recent one, but all of our research has shown that is not the case at all. They want guidance more than anyone else and they want it from the dealership. So you might think maybe it's the dealership on TikTok. Maybe it's Russ flipping whips that they want the interaction go, with. Baby. <laughs> but they're looking for that expert, whoever it may be, at the dealership. So, you know, they'll do their research online just like anyone else, just so everyone knows. YouTube is actually their number one platform, not TikTok. It's, but they need to validate it. They're still going in person to the dealership. Very few people are buying online. Those types of buyers basically have a harder time buying online because they have new credit. 50% of them come in with someone else very different, you know, than someone my age, you know, might. And they're usually, and they're obviously coming in almost entirely with a parent versus, you know, older generations coming in with a spouse if they come in with anyone. They're coming in, they're looking for expertise. They are hungry for your knowledge. So, you know, that's kind of a, I would think for a salesperson, that would be kind of a, a cool, you know, perspective to have where a lot of the interactions you might have with an older generation might be less eager, let's say.